Hello everyone and I'm here in Blockscape again. I am today going to give you a quick tutorial on how the logic gates work in Blockscape and what they do and how to kind of put them together so that they do their job properly. So here is your electricity update. It's quite new um, so if you you might find that it's a bit buggy um, like this time I've just loaded up I've had duplicates of some of the blocks which is a bit strange um, when I loaded it up last time I only had one of each and this time I've had double but ignore that okay um, what you've got in here you've got a series of blocks so I'll try and separate the duplicates here um, into a way that's going to be a bit easier to understand you don't have to worry about those um, you're going to want some wires, that's fine. Right, okay, so these are your blocks you're going to need. You've got your main wire down the bottom here, you've got a switch, which is here, a, and you've got, uh, which is which, you've got a battery and a capacitor, one of which is these two, uh, a resistor, and then these are your four logic gates. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get out a, what am I going to do? I'm going to get some lamp, some light, get some light going and then what we can do is we can use the logic gates to switch it on and off. So if I get a nice tall stack of light here so that it's nice and bright and we'll know what it's doing. So with light you can switch light on and off with the electricity so I've just wired up some cable to it here like so. Now you've got to have the cable going to each block by the looks of it so wire that all up like that and this here will then be your input to the light. So because it's a light block it will be on as default unless such point as you hook it up to a circuit which would mean it isn't on. Okay so the switch is what I've got out here. Now when you place it down there's an arrow on it um, let me just, what I'll do is I'll no clip and there you go, you'll see there's an arrow on it which means it, the circuit will work in one way out of it so if you put in a wire you need to have it so that it comes out of where the arrow points to now as default when you place a block with an arrow on it will generally point towards you so you need to bear that in mind when placing it so what I'm going to do is if I get this switch here and I want it to turn all of this on or off so I'm going to remember it faces towards me and there you go so this is what I was saying about once you hook it up to a circuit the lights will automatically calculate whether they need to be on or off based on if the circuit should be allowing it to so there we go, we've got a nice simple circuit and all you've got to do is just left or right click on the switch and it will turn it on or off. So there is a basic light switch for you. Um, you can just right click on the on the switch to then turn that on or off. So now we get into logic gates which is the, the reason why I've made this video and we've got four different logic gates here. Um, now we'll separate them into two different types uh, so we've got these two on the left here which is an AND gate and a NAND gate and then on the right you've got an OR gate and an XOR gate um, they do these two left ones do the same thing but reversed of each other and the same with the two on the right so if I place down an AND gate here which is the simpler one of the lot what you'll see is this symbol on the top and the arrows. You've got an arrow at the top which is the output, same as what you've got with the switch and then you've got three at the bottom. Now the three at the bottom relate to the three sides here and what an AND gate does is it relies on having the inputs on via a switch. So if I put a switch here, no, remember they need to face towards where you want them to be so all the arrows have to point towards the wire like so. Now an AND gate needs 
all of the inputs that are connected to it to be on in order for the output to be active. So if I just switch one on, nothing's going to happen. If I switch two on, nothing's going to happen. It will only work if all of the inputs are switched on. So if I turn any one of these off, it's going to cut the circuit out. Now what you can do is you can just have say two like so um, and that can be any two if you want so if I hook up another another this side like so and even with one you can just have one going through it um, not that you'd have any need to just have one because you could just use a switch but that's an AND gate, an AND gate, even. So think of it as um, any inputs you need input one and input two and input three on for it to work. Okay. So then what we have is we have a NAND gate, which is the same thing but the opposite. So this the symbol for this is pretty much the same, but it's got this little nubbin on the top of it. So same principle again with you've got three inputs available to you. Uh, so let's hook that up again. However you can see there the lights just turned on because how this works is it's the, exactly the same as the AND gate but the opposite. So it will be on unless all three are on in which case it will turn the circuit off if that makes sense so as default it will oh no as default it will provide power but when all the inputs are on it will turn the power off so if I turn any one of these off it will turn the light on so it's just the inverse of what we just did before oh uh, and there we go so it's off so that's why I kind of categorize the two together like so. So let's turn all these back off again and take that out. And then we'll go to the third logic gate, which is an OR gate. Now, think of it as the inputs again and how you kind of describe it. So um, input one or input two or input three. Okay. And that then means that any if any of these are on it will turn the light on so if that is on it will turn it on or that one or that one or any combination of two like so or three the light will be on so it only needs one or more of the switches to be active and it will let the power through simple which means that say you had your whole house rigged up with lights you could have a switch in each room for example if they all went through these OR gates it would mean that you just have to have one of the switches active in any of the rooms and it will turn the lights on okay so then on to the last logic gate which is the XOR gate uh, which again like I categorized before is the same but the opposite so it will be on unless any one of the switches are active in which case it will turn off so if you have all three active no power two active no power like so so there's a bit of basic knowledge on the logic gates and how to wire up some slightly more complex circuits um, so have a watch of this and then I'm going to follow this up with a video on how to make a combination lock, a security combination lock for a door. So keep an eye out for that, get a basic knowledge of the logic gates and then we can do some more complex things. So thanks for watching, hopefully that's give you, given you a bit more of an insight into how the electricity system works. It's going to be a little bit more complex later on with some more updates because you're going to need batteries and things in with it as well. But until then, this is how it works. So, thanks for watching.